hey guys so this video is actually me actually reposting a video that i've posted that was taken down before but the reason why it had to be taken down was because youtube actually sent me an email which i'll be sharing on the screen and they told me that video needs to be taken down because there's a copyright strike on it and the person's video who was in it was just about two to three minutes and i was like hey like i would like to i sent the person an email told her that i can just cut your part out like if you can give me the opportunity to do that but no she refused to re respond to me and ignored me she gave me two options give me a monetary compensation or you're gonna trim my part out but i didn't have the opportunity to trim her part out unless she actually let me so i sent her an email and told her can you remove it and she refused so she ignored me and that is why i'm ha having to repost it and trimmed her part out and the, the video had like about eighty thousand, more than eighty thousand views and it was like good it was thriving but i had to do that i'm like i'm not a big channel i'm just thriving trying to grow this platform but anyways guys that's just i just wanted to let you guys know that just in case for some of you who have watched this video and you're seeing it again all i've been saying lately is my mortgage went off my mortgage went off and people are saying that their mortgage went off and they're not just talking about little amounts to me like when you start calling a thousand i think you're calling a lot when you start calling 500 you're calling lots now because you know budgeting your bills that like the bills you're paying monthly and then someone just comes and increase $150 on top of it, $200. That's going to be a lot in maybe your budget. Maybe you don't even have like a lot of money left by the time you've paid a lot of bills based on your paycheck. And then t someone telling you that they're increasing your mortgage to about $1,000 increase on the bills that you pay monthly. And let's say whenever you finish paying your bills before the 1,000 has been increased on it, you're only left with just maybe $200 to do what with it maybe buy some miscellaneous for yourself i'm just going to be sharing with you guys where many people are actually talking about how their mortgage went up and some who actually had something to do with hoa and with the scam that they actually experienced with it so before we get right into this video make sure you please click the like button subscribe to the channel if you're new here and hit the notification bell to get notified every time i post a new video let's get right into it my mortgage went up a thousand dollars and i am not okay so let me tell you guys for the longest time people will be screaming from the hilltop home ownership is not it like don't rush don't rush and i will just be like i don't understand it because i'm literally chilling like cheaper than rent <sighs> i was bamboozled so let me tell y'all what they do not tell y'all about real estate so they do an analysis every year from the, at least with the mortgage that I got, right? And so they did an analysis and basically my mortgage increased by $1,000. And I asked them why. And they were like, something about my house is a new build. And so I guess they charged me for the taxes when it was just the land for two years. Then after year two, they add the taxes with the house actually on it. And they were like, yeah, your builder is supposed to tell you they didn't <laughs> they didn't and so i asked them can i sell the house <laughs> and they were like there's no equity in it <laughs> you guys see me smiling but come next month i'm literally going to be in tears because a thousand dollars extra a month i legit want to move back home and live with my parents <laughs> but i don't have that option <laughs> i'm sick like i'm sick honestly don't buy a house if you're single like buy a house when there's two incomes coming in because baby you gonna need it my freaking mortgage went up almost three thousand dollars 2903 to be exact yep so i am i'm pissed i'm mad i'm upset and i am thankful to god that i am able to pay it i am i truly am and jesus i am not complaining i am just explaining okay so hear me out i just i'm upset because it's like i feel like what about the other people who can't pay who are on a fixed income so you mean to tell me your mortgage is a set amount every month you're paying it you're paying it you're paying it then all of a sudden insurance rates rise property taxes go up so now you've got this huge amount that you owe all of a sudden and your escrow's in the negative and i understand it'll go back to not exactly normal or back to the original payment because it will be slightly higher but it will adjust itself once it's paid i get that 
but it's so excessive to me that it's bothering me. My concern is this. What's it gonna stop it from continuing to rise? What's the end game here? What protections do we have? I did file for my homestead exemption and most of you who don't know homestead exemption, um, it, it truly helps you with the taxable amount of, of your home. So let's just say your home is half a million dollars, 500,000, you will only be taxed at 450,000. Once you file that once, you do not have to file it ever again, as long as it's your primary home. And if it's not your primary home, I think the um, maximum you can get is 25,000. Our only option is to shop around for um, new insurance. I actually have the lowest rate. What are we supposed to do? Just hand them the Vaseline? Just let them keep charging us? Has your mortgage gone up this month? Yeah, the people that I feel very sorry for is the fact that you would go and own, buy a property and you're like, oh, I'm living in this house. I'm trying to own a home. I think it's very nice for all of us to own a house. Like, why wouldn't you want to do that if you're working and you're trying to, like, be successful and be comfortable in life? You wouldn't want to keep paying rent for the rest of your life. But I feel like if you're doing all of that, and we may doing that at any time you guys can just increase and rack up the price that is over me like it's more than what i can pay and i'm just there with my fixed income you want me to go and get multiple jobs maybe during the weekend to be able to pay or the whole property is just going to be gone you know all the payments that i've made will go in vain i do not like that at all like it doesn't even sound appealing to me and they are not genuine honest people they lie a lot they are ready to rip you off for money sometimes they might actually do it just so they can make sure that you leave that place and so they can own it again and sell it to someone else and do the same thing and also you know get it again and sell it to someone else Somebody talking about Oh, when I bought my new home and my mortgage increased and I didn't know my mortgage was going to increase. Let me give y'all a story time. So we're at the closing table. They say your mortgage is going to be 1907. We're like, oh, dang. Okay. You know, and uh, of course we did put a, a certain amount of money down to make sure that our payment did not exceed 2000. So it's good to feel that you could do that, right? Interest rate 2.9. By the way, this is back in 2020. Brand, brand new home. 2,600 square feet, I mean, all that, right? Um, and I'm not expecting any hiccups because my mom has purchased new homes more than once. Cousins, aunties, uncles, all purchased new homes more than once. And the thing that they don't tell you is the home does not come with blinds. The home, new construction, doesn't come with a refrigerator. It doesn't come with washer and dryer. You can add some of these items and it's going to be a cost. It's going to be a higher cost than you going to buy it yourself. So we didn't expect all of these extra costs. So as soon as you leave the closing table, broke and happy, uh, you got to put out thousands of dollars more that puts you in debt or your credit. You're going to run up your credit because once the house going your credit, it's going to be harder for you to uh, get anything approved because you're going your debt to income ratio, all that kind of stuff, right? They tell you don't run your credit while you're in closing. Don't get no new car. Don't do nothing new. Don't buy no furniture. So you wait and do it all once you close. And we live in live in life good. 1907. You know, the average price for an apartment right now in Dallas is $1,800. $1,907? Oh, but after that year went by. After the year went by, I get a notice in the uh, mail saying what our taxes do are. And I'm like, I ain't tripping. We got escrow, right? We got to have escrow. We got escrow. Then I get a message from the, the, the mortgage lender that our escrow account is negative. And there is going to be an a increase of our mortgage by over, y'all ain't hearing me, over $1,500. Or you can pay this $11,800 in a one lump sum payment. What? I said, ain't no way. Y'all can have the house back. Hey, what, are you, what are you talking about? Our mortgage would go up $3,300, $3,400. And you're not talking about the garden. You're not talking about the electricity. You're not talking about the gas. You're not talking about everything else in there. All the bills we just got because we didn't have no credit. We didn't have no washer and dryer refrigerator we don't want no little regular degla refrigerator we got to have a refrigerator that you knock twice and it light up thirty three hundred dollars from 19 dollars is crazy like so what are y'all doing are y'all janky in people like where you gotta approve their income and our income to give us and say that we can afford this kind of payment then you give us the payment knowing this new construction and then knowing our payment's gonna increase but at that point we don't have to you know approve income anymore and now we're stuck with the payment or we foreclosed on like what happened like what's going on Oh, but it gets crazy.
Okay, we gotta go ahead and run a part two for why, how the mortgage went up fifteen hundred dollars. Cause I got people calling me lie. I got people saying I should have did more homework. I got more people telling me, oh, it's because you know that can go up every year. It is. It can go up one hundred to two, three hundred dollars because your insurance and your your mortgage insurance and and it. Like no, that's not why. When you purchase a new constructed home, see now I know. I mean, take a look, take a stroll through my page. I know a little bit about real estate nowadays. When you buy a new constructed home, the property taxes for that year is based on the land. So, so let me break it down for you for my exact situation because I tell my business, I don't care. I'm trying to help somebody. When they, when we bought our home in 1907, the property taxes was based on sixty-eight thousand dollars is what is which what the land was worth at the time. So the county was only charging taxes on the property for the land. The deal in the home had not been constructed long enough for the property taxes to uh, add or include what the additions or improvements, as the county would say. So when you buy your home and then a year goes by, now the county has record of the improvements that were put on top of the land. So not only will you still have the land cost, but now you actually have the house, the constructed house on top. Now I don't know how much your house is, but I see some, I got some amens in the comments, but it added $390,000 on top of, what's so crazy is, the land even it went up in that one year. So the land that was sixty or $68,000 when, when we were at the closing table is now worth seventy nine dollars or $80,000. Then you add $396,000 to that. Now that's why your mortgage went up is because of the property taxes. So that's why the mortgage lender said you can pay the property taxes outright, meaning you can give us a check for over $11,000 and your mortgage will stay the same. But your escrow will continue to be short uh, if you don't pay this out every year, which your escrow is supposed to be getting enough money in it to cover the taxes. But in newly con in new constructed homes, it is very rare you will find anybody saying that their escrow account had enough money to cover property taxes. And this is the reason why. So if you are buying a new home, F what these people say in these comments. Don't listen to them. You can do enough homework and still not notice. You can you can research it. Listen, if you buy a new constructed home, are you sitting in a new constructed home and ain't been there for a year? I'm letting you know. Go on the go on your CAD website. So put in whatever county you're in. For example, Dallas County Appraisal District. Go to property search. Put in your name as the owner or put in your address. It will pull up and see what is recorded under the county website. If on that appraisal district website it does not have improvements it says your property address is only worth what you know you ain't paid then that lets you know that it has not in included your improvements yet and be ready don't think owning a home should ever be this difficult people shouldn't go through this amount of um, too much stress like this and also there's actually something that i learned that with this interest rates there are variable interest rates and there's also fixed interest rates so sometimes when people are actually going to buy a house or they want to own a home they are going to sign all this um stuff with this insurance company and the rest sometimes when you're signing it they say people do not really know that they are actually variable interest rate and they are also fixed interest rate so majority of the time people go and sign and accept the ones that are variable interest rates which means that your interest rate can change at any time while you're living or while you're making your payment and before you know it that means they can increase it for you anytime and take it it can just go really high it can change but the fixed one means it is what you actually agree upon in the to start with and that's what you continue paying which is in reality right now what are the chances of you getting a fixed interest rate it's so difficult but that is actually something for some of you to note just in case you do not know about this because by all means whether you agree or not these people are actually very tricky and they are ready to take to take your money like sharks that are ready to just suck every living blood out of you so be careful be careful out there when making deals with these people i just watched what has to be one of the most horrifying videos i have ever seen on this app regarding our country's financial future it was posted by a woman named tiffany i will link it um she's talking about how private equity firms have been buying up all the single family homes so up until very recently we didn't actually have the numbers to say just how many homes they've been buying up and 
most politicians across the fucking board, Democrat, Republican, whatever, have been saying, well, they're really only buying like 18% of single family homes. And then economists chimed in and said that if private equity firms are buying up anywhere from 18 to 20 to 23% of single family homes in this country, that by 2030, they would own 60% of all of the homes in America. Well, we just got the final numbers. Um, in 2023, private equity firms purchased 44% of all of the single family homes in America, which means death for our middle class. Our generation will not be homeowners. They will have us permanently renting from like two or three companies. Now America has a lot of problems, but this should be a unifying problem that every single person who is not part of one of those private equity firms cares about, including current homeowners. They bought 44% of all of the single family homes in America last year, and they are set up to purchase an even higher percentage of them this year. Unless we have major reform, almost all of the single family homes in this country will be owned by these private equity firms in a very, very short amount of time. If you plan on ever buying a home, do not ever get a home with an HOA. I am currently getting sued by my HOA. The HOA is now $950 per month. I ain't got it. So what do they decide to do? They decide to hire lawyers to basically force me to give them money I don't have. So now on top of that, they're now also charging me for their lawyer fees, that the, for the lawyers they hired to sue me. My HOA, $10,000. And I'm just like, finally have an update. I need to fill you in on the shenanigans that the HOA is trying to play. I know I went radio silent and that's because during the lawsuit, I couldn't talk about anything. First of all, I am so freaking glad I got a lawyer. So my lawyer has been doing all the negotiating on my behalf. My HOA found out about my videos and needless to say, they were not happy. I'm actually glad that I posted about it because it applied the necessary pressure to make them act right. So here's where the shady business happened. Going through all the negotiations, we've discussed timeline of payments, how much um, the payments should be, but fees are getting waived. Out of nowhere, the HOA mailed me like a pack of paperwork, like documentation. I didn't know it was coming, but it just arrived at my doorstep. It must be like, you know, with everything that we've been discussing, like just to get everything underway and like have something agreed upon and like signed off on, right? So I'm like relieved about it. Call my lawyer up and I'm like, hey, like, oh, so the, the HOA just sent me this like documentation. I don't know what it is. And he's like, oh, wait, what? What did they send you? I'm like, oh, I don't know. It says final consent, cons consent judgment. He's like, absolutely do not sign that. I'm like, why, what is it? He said the, con the consent judgment it does not include any of the terms that we're negotiating on, any of the any of the terms that we've agreed on. If I sign it, they're allowed to foreclose on my home because I have not paid the full amount. That's all that it says. So I'm like, wait, what? So what is the point of all the negotiations that we're doing? He's like, I don't know what they're up to. They probably thought that you would get it and just sign it and that way they can go forward without having to agree on the terms that we're currently negotiating. He was like, I would never have you sign that. Basically throw that, tear it up and throw it away. That just proves that they're trying to be shady. Like all the, the benefit of the doubt I was trying to give them, they're literally sending me paperwork that says, we are going to foreclose on your house if you don't pay us $10,000 while we're in the midst of negotiating. So the negotiations go on. There'll be closure to the situation. So when you're trying to own a home, the amount of things, demands that they ask you for, it's a lot. And then at the same time, on top of the whole things that they ask you for, they want you to feel so many things and then so much money. It's almost like they're just asking you for money, 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 money. So there are many people who are like, hey, like they are not going through all of that. They don't even qualify to even get a home. And the ones who qualify to get a home are getting scammed so bad. They keep getting an increase in their mortgage. Everything just keeps going up for them. It's like too much financial strain for them when it comes to their, their income versus what they're actually paying. It's just so much.
and i know they will be like hey like rather than actually you going to consistently rent and you're just paying rent and you're not owning it why not just go and try to own a home but then when people who actually are renters watch people who own a home go through such situation where's the motivation for them to actually go and even believe or think that they are definitely going to own a home someday